but uh, as you notice we are going through the alphabet A to Z so this is uh, the, bo the board game I'm gonna um, uh, the box says it's going to take two to three hours with setup I would say it more takes like four hours um, especially with six players so please be wary of that this is a free six player game um, board game geek gives it Battlestar Galactica is a 3 to 6 hour board game. Um, in it. So, without anything else, we're going to pull them out, just do a bit of an overview, and then we'll go into the boxes. So, this is a normal game. It's nice, red. Uh, when we open this up, this has got a few bits from the expansions in, so if you see certain things, I'll say which expansion it comes. But this is the box, the normal game. So we're going to put it here. Will it? Uh, TV series. Um, um, uh, um, so we will, which is like a dog fighting game. Um, his game. I'm gonna open it up. So this is the board. So as you can see, that is the board here. So you've got Galactica here. Uh, you've got the presidential shuttle here. So these are your two ships at the start. Uh, these are your fuel, your food, your morale. And population tracker. There's an arrow at the top which says where you normally play. In easy versions you go up, in hard versions you start further down. Uh, you've all, all, I've also got the silent locations here, because of yes, you can be a silent in this game. Uh, and then you've got the boarding party tracker for the silence and the jump tracker. Uh, you get your rule book here. In the expansions, each expansion comes with another book in its same colours. Um, what's nice in the last two expansions, you've got a quick reference guide at the back. Uh, sadly, that doesn't happen in Pe uh, Pegasus or the normal board game. Um, <coughs> so yeah, um, on cards, at the bottom, they've got little symbols. I'll blow it up hopefully on the screen for you. Um, so if you've got no symbol on it, that is from the main board game. Um, you've got the Pegasus symbol here, it's features in the book. That is for the Pegasus expansion. Um, base star symbol for uh, Exodus. And you've got a Raptor icon for Daybreak. So there you are, uh, <coughs> how you can tell the basic game from the expansion. Now, you've got tactic cards, uh, your smaller cards, I'm not going to put them all out, but uh, they're this size, or the same back, um, and they literally normally go as a face down pile on each location. 
and then you discard them normally here. So as you can see, you do put things around the board as well. So it's not just the board size and your, what you want in your hand. Um, they're all the same on the back because of you shuffle them all together and it's secret which ones you use. So Cylons will use different colour ones outside of the morale groups to try and sabotage the game. You've also got a Destiny deck to make it more random so you can't tell if there was a Cylon in your midst, if there wasn't, and it's just a bit of chance. So you've got to think what you want to do. So they go there. Um, then you've got your location decks, which is here. So every time you jump, you're trying to get further along. The idea of the game is to get to your location you're aiming for. So the Admiral will get somewhere, like in the normal board game, you're trying to get to Cobalt. So you need to get to eight distance, then jump once more, is what you're trying to do. And how you do it is every time you jump, you take two. At the bottom, it says the distance you're gone, so these are both ones. There is a zero, and it goes up to about three. Well, in the board, normal board game, there is it's between one and three. In the expansions, you can get zero. Once you get to at least four distance or more, a sleeper phase happens, and I'll tell you more about that when we get onto the silent cards. So, so you're trying to get to a certain distance. Each card has pros and cons. Um, so a big jump will you use more fuel than a short jump. So like the basic three here, three fuel for three distance. You've got to lose two fuel for two distance. Um, some might be lo lose a fuel and something else. So this is a two distance, but you lose only one fuel to go two distance, but you also destroy a raptor. Destroyed small ships can't come back in the base game. So that's your distance tracker, and it's the Admiral which chooses. So, if a silence the Admiral, it's quite bad, because they will pick the worst ones for you. They might not always want to help. Well, silence never want to help. So, you also have a President, so you get presidential cards. These cards are can be helpful. So they could get morale back, they might get food back with a... Um, food shortage, or they might let somebody out of the brig. Uh, if you go to the brig while you're president, you stay the president. If you go to the brig while you're the admiral, you lose the admiral. And the admiral can take presidency by martial law. Um, at the end of each player's turn, you have to draw one of these, which is a test, unless you're in the brig when you don't. So this skill check shows. So it shows sometimes you've got to do a test, with a target at the top, sometimes you don't. Um, so you always get a pass or a fail, or you get a choice. The skill tests here is, if I pull another one up, they're all, all the time, the colours are in the same place to help if you're colour blind or not. Uh, so you have yellow, which is politics, which also starts here, and they do go in this order. Then you've got green for leadership, purple for tactics, red for pilots, blue for engineer. Each of these, if you use the colour which is on the card, it counts positive to the test. If you use the colour which isn't on the card, it counts negative towards the test. And you're trying to get number at the top. And then you do the pass or fail. Sometimes there's three effects. So if you fail but not by a certain margin, it might give you a different ability. So it's not so quite so bad. So in the bottom, you've also got different areas. That one there is Raptors Activate where this one here is always to do with the human, so that's you prep the jump tracker. Uh, so at the start, goes here, then you go here, you can't jump, here you can't jump, here you can jump if you really need to, uh, but you lose civilian ships. Losing civilian ships will affect here, so if you lose population, morale goes down, if you lose food, food goes down, and so on and so forth, you get the idea. Uh, if you jump here, you lose one civilian ship, but if you get all the way to the end, you jump successfully and you lose no one. So it's always good to wait. But you can force a jump going to the FTL control if need be. So now we go for the loyalty cards. Most will say you are not a Cylon. But there are others which will go you are a Cylon. This is you are a Cylon. And you see there's plenty of text. So it says what your aim is. And if you reveal in a certain way... 
what happens. Um, Scions are trying to obviously sabotage it and get one of the four areas to the zero before the end of the game. If they do that, Cylons win. Um, at the start of the game, you all draw one card. So you could have, at the start of the game, everybody is not a Cylon. But, as you see in the TV series, and sorry for the spoiler, people find them themselves are a Cylon and changing. So, halfway through each game, you get another phase, where you draw, um, you draw a new loyalty card. In certain number of player games, you'll get you are a sympathizer, which means if all the ones are in the blue, here, you act silent. If one of them is in the red, you actually are trying to help humans. So it's trying to use when you are not uh, when you are a sympathizer, wh what happens in normal game on Pegasus? You use all your cards up. Uh, so if there is one Cylon, you know that there's definitely one Cylon in. If there's two Cylons, by sleep phase you will have two Cylons. In the other expansions, you get more cards in the deck because of you have personal goals, you've got agendas and other ways. So even though there's two Cylons in the deck, you might not actually have a Cylon in your game. So it is nice that it mixes it more up. Um, here's the Admiral card I, I can see. Uh, this presidential card, and it says what you can do while well, you're the Admiral. In later expansions, you also get the CAG um, role in it. So let's look at some of the models. So these come in the base game. So, well, this one doesn't, bad example. This comes in one of the later expansions. So instead of using cardboard cutouts, you've actually got a Cylon to go along the Cylon track here. You have normal Raiders, these come in the base game. And you've got the heavy Raiders here. Um, these don't shoot like the Raiders do. But these will um, enter Galactica to obviously do a boarding party. If the boarding party ever gets to here, humans lose. The armory is the way you try have to try and get rid of them in your turn. You also get a token to put underneath a raider, which symbolizes Scar. If uh, Scar comes out. Uh, it doesn't always come out in the games. I must have played this about 10 times. I've only seen Scar twice. So you aren't always getting Scar. Uh, in here, these are the tokens from all the expansions put together. These are your pilot tokens. So while you're... Uh, if you're a pilot, you can jump out into a rapture. And this goes underneath the rapture you're in. Symbolise which one you are. So in the humans, the ones you get... Some Mark II Vipers, you get a shiny nuke token or two, you get some Raptors. In the later expansions, you get Mark VII Vipers, and then you also get Assault Raptors. Um, assault Raptors can actually fight, where normal Raptors just go out and scout. So on here, where you, when you've got Raptors, they just symbolise how many you've got to play with. So you can sacrifice them to get different areas. If you're out and you get a damaged Viper, they go here. You also can get destroyed Vipers, which means they do leave the game. But if they only get damaged, you can get them repaired. Uh, and then obviously, here's your jump tracker as well. So that's the like human ships. In Pegasus, you also get a like an alternative way to play. You get Cylon leaders. So instead of uh, having a rest if you're Cylon or Human, you can play as Cylon Leader. And depending on how many players, for a Cylon Leader you have to have at least four players playing. Uh, it changes up, so you could be Sympathizer or you could be against the Humans. So you get, from Pegasus onwards, you get extra uh, Cylon Leader cards. So here's your Cylon Leader card. 
and you get your token so you can move around the ship and show where you are. So civilian ships all look like that on the back so you don't know what they are. But on this side it says it says it's a ship and then it says what you lose. So here you lose one set of population where this ship you wouldn't lose anything. So there are some ships you can lose and there's others you can't. And out of here this is when you damage um, base stars and you need to do obviously free damage to it so this is like double damage you can make it so it can't shoot raiders um, sorry launch raiders and there's others like that also you then get pegasus tokens when you do pegasus so in the base game you get normal cardboard base stars but in pegasus you get shiny plastic 3D base stars. So that's why I always keep some of the stuff in this game because it's nicer to play with a shiny 3D one than normal plastic, well, cardboard 2D one. So there are some pros and cons from buying some of the expansions, if you, even if you don't want really to use them. Uh, you can use all four, three expansions with the base game if you want. It takes a bit longer um, if you, and it makes it slightly easier if you use Pegasus in the other games. Um, and then in the other games, you get quite a good stack of extra characters you can be, um, which you can use anytime, or you can just use them in which expansion you want to do. It's personal choice, um, but it does give you a lot of options. Um, there's four roles basically. You can be a politician leader, you can be a military person, you can be a pilot, uh, or you can be support. So you could be like Tyrrell, who's a support character where he's very good at repairing areas. So he runs around repairing your stuff for you. Uh, you always normally want at least uh, a pilot to go up, jump out, uh, and you want to try and have an even amount of each type of characteristics in this game. Um, so that's a brief overview from it. We will show you some of the other expansions in a minute. So each expansion gives you something different. So if we open Pegasus for a second, the main things are you get Pegasus. Uh, it also gives you a six skill type which is Traitor. Uh, you also are trying to get to New Caprica and then off New Caprica. So you get another part of the board for New Caprica and this only comes in when you get to Caprica. Um, you also get a slight errata to the silent locations so you've got a board to set over your silent locations. So that's what you can add with Pegasus. Um, obviously it gives you a lot more cards, so it gives you different areas. Each pile gives you a different ability, so sometimes you use them only in skill checks, uh, but you can also use them outside of skill checks to do different areas. That's Pegasus. When you go to Exodus, um, you have to go through the Nebula. Uh, so different things happen, you can play the Nebula where you can actually get removed from the game. Uh, there's also a way for you to uh, team up with Good Silence and you get a, well, sorry, no, this isn't. Also choose to have Silence follow you. So instead of uh, Silence always jumping out at you at random times, you can actually get a shoot tracker. Every time something happens, they come closer. There are pros and cons about the Pursuit Tracker. So it's got your different locations. Um, here for when you roll dice to see where you put it around the base star. With this is every time you jump, all the ships come here. When, you, when this catches up, all ships which are on here go on to this board. The good thing about the Pursuit Tracker is if you get all the silent ships on here, when silence do turn up, because there's a limited amount of them, you can't put any on here, so you're safer. Bad side is, if you don't deal with them, when the base star does catch up with you, 
you get swamped. So there are pros and cons about the pursuit tracker. So that's one of the new add-ons which you can play with Exodus. And finally, you, we've got Daybreak. So Daybreak gives us, again, a new island location. It also gives us a new Colonial 1, which sits here. Uh, and then obviously it's got Colonial 1 destroyed. You can destroy Colonial 1 in any of the games. It's not widely known you can do it in any of the games, but you can do it in any of the games. But this one, normally when Colonial 1 gets destroyed, um, you've got nothing to do, but with the Daybreak one, you can actually flip it over and say it's destroyed. You can also get destroy with a silent location, you can also destroy the silent location so it gets worse, harder for them. They've double sided it. You also get in Daybreak, the Democles Waste Ship. So you can use it as a scouting one, so you can try and do the goals to help you um, look through the pursuit, uh, not the pursuit tracker, the, Dest um, the destiny deck. It can help you do various abilities to try and help the humans win. And you also get the help, if you so wish, a rebel base star. So you can see, if you start adding lots of areas onto it, uh, all of these add-ons do go on the sides, so it can suddenly get large. Um, when we play it, we sometimes do it as like a series, so we play the basic game, then we'll play the Pegasus, then we'll play the Exodus, and then we'll play the Daybreak. It's really hard playing them all as one storyline, because if you've got to adjust the fuel, and then or how you'd add on in the Cylons, but we do play like when we play one game after another. Um, normally we play like once every couple of months because it is a very long game. Um, we go in around if Pegasus finally dies and Pegasus always sits here because of the treachery deck. Um, once Pegasus is destroyed you don't play it again throughout the other games. Um, but we leave it on until it does get destroyed. And then we add in the different areas as we go into that expansion. So you can play it as you wish, but if you are playing with every version, you can get a lot adding to the board. Just be wary of that. Hopefully it's just given, this video has given you an appetite for the game. Um, as I say, it is hard to get hold of, so I won't go into it too much deep, more detail, just because of some people will not be able to play it. And so this isn't how to play video. I hope you enjoy it, um, this video. I certainly do. It is a good game, but it's not one I feel like you could play back to back due to how long it is. Uh, as I say, we play it every two to three months, and that is a nice amount of time. Board Game Geek gives it a 7.7 7 out of 10. Uh, for this, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Not 10 out of 10 because of, as I say, you can't play it multiple times a week. I would recommend playing it once every two to once every three months. And to get into it one time, you have to play it with somebody else who's played it before, really, to help you describe it. The first game time you'll play it won't be brilliant because you haven't got fully into it. It's one of them where you have to play it once um, first to get into it. Um, so I hope you can... Uh, I hope you did enjoy this video, so I hope you did enjoy this video, um, sorry I didn't go into too much detail for it. Uh, next week is we're doing Carcassonne, so please tune in at 6pm next Friday, and have a good evening, good night.